for joining us online. We're so blessed to have you join with us today and believe that God has something special for each and every one of us in this place. How many of you would like to hear some good news? We have a anniversary here today. David and Matilda, Matilda Jones are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. I want you guys to stand up, would you? Right here. God bless you. 25 years. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. That is a major accomplishment. Now on to 50. Now on to 50. And then 75 after that. It's possible. There are people that have reached their 75th wedding anniversary. We appreciate and, and are so grateful to you and the example of faithfulness that you have displayed in your life. Appreciate you so very much. And to those of you that have been married for one day or one year, we pray God will bless your life with great goodness. This morning, I want to share with you a beginning of a message. It's more of an introduction than anything else. It's a continuation of our series, Look Up. And today I want to encourage you to discover the promise on Mount Moriah. Now, you may not know where, what Mount Moriah represents. We're going to talk a little bit about it here in just a moment. But God has a promise. I believe with all of my heart that there is a definitive move of God, a definitive call of God upon the church today to look up, to look up. We can look at the circumstances that surround our life, and especially today, it is, it is a challenging year that we're living in. We seem like we just got through COVID-19 and it rears up its ugly head again and again. Then we're looking and facing monkeypox. And who knows what else that may come. The recession or what some are suggesting will be the impending Or just so many, a litany of so many things that, that, that just seem to just pull us down lower and lower and lower. But I want you to know something this morning. Our God is on high. I said our God is on high. And furthermore, not only is he on high, but he has called us to arise on high. Not, not to be, obviously we're concerned with the things that happen in this world. I think you'd almost have to not be intelligent not to be concerned with the things that we're facing in the world today but we're not to be bound by the things of this world today we are called to move upward upward we're called to advance we are called to arise i want to encourage you don't get stuck looking down don't get stuck looking at the things that surround you in life if you will look up if you will arise I believe with all of my heart that God will help you to rise above the problems and issues of this day. God has called us to arise. Everything about God implies a journey upward. In fact, it's interesting that in the Bible, when it refers to God, it usually refers to the Lord in terms of up, high. Mountains are an important part of the Bible. You read it over and over again. But I want to encourage you this morning, every one of us, even if you're in the midst of the greatest battle, spiritual battle of your life, if you're in the midst of the most difficult circumstance in your life, I want to encourage you, rather than looking down, it's interesting to me that the more we focus on our problems, the more we focus on the disadvantages, the more that we focus on the difficulties of life, the bigger and bigger they become. And it's not that they're growing, it's that they grow in our sight. They become bigger and bigger to us. However, if we look up, if we arise, God becomes bigger and bigger in our sight. And the Bible says with God, all things are possible. There is no limitation to those that are serving the Lord. Everything about God is a journey of ascension. And in this season of 2022, I believe with all in my heart, and I think it's more appropriate today to say that people are desperate today. People are desperate. And this is one of the reasons why I believe there will be a mighty move of God in this season of time, because of the desperation of people. Because when people are desperate, they begin to look for something other than what they had in the past. 
They begin to look for something that is greater, something that is bigger, something that is more significant than anything they've experienced in the past. And what we know and what we've experienced is, is God is bigger than any problem we have. And so that as people encounter the struggles and the difficulties of life, if we lead them to Jesus, not lead them to the church, not lead them to a religion or denomination or organizations or personalities, but if we will exalt the, 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 the life of Jesus Christ, if we will lead people to an authentic relationship with Jesus, I believe they will find what they're looking for. In fact, not only will they find what they're looking for, they'll find more than what they're looking for. They'll find something to believe in. They'll find something to sustain them through the difficulties of this life. And they'll find something that will engage them, something that will challenge them to go forward, to move forward, not to be stagnant in life. There's a desperate need for God today. There's always been a need for the Lord. But so great a need today, so obvious a need today. There's so much pain in this world today, so much confusion there's so much suffering in this world. You don't have to be a, a great observer of life. You don't have to look too much in depth to see that there is suffering all around us. But not only that, but violence. I can tell you, when people lose hope, they can become violent. When people lose engagement, when, when people lose something that sustains them, something that they will believe in, something that will hold them up, they may become violent. And I want you to know this morning, our God will ease the violent heart and bring peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. This world doesn't give an eternal or lasting peace. All the, this world can give is a peace for the moment, peace for the season, peace in the specific circumstance perhaps. But our God gives a peace regardless of what we go through. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. And then he said, don't be discouraged. Don't be troubled. Don't let the issues of this life drag you down because God's peace will elevate you. God is calling his church to ascend to his mountain. And what does that mean? That means that we're to ascend to the presence of God. I pray that every time we meet together in service, that we don't just have a religious encounter, that we don't just have a, 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 a excuse me, we don't have a, a service, but that we truly have an encounter with God. Can I tell you that while you were worshiping the Lord, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. That while you're praising him, while you're celebrating him, God is moving in this place. And I believe it doesn't have to be specific prayer. It doesn't have to be somebody laying hands on you. It doesn't have to be somebody praying for you. I believe that while we worship the Lord, while we gather together in unity, because God is here, he said, I'll take ownership of that place, that God is here, he begins to move and begins to do the miraculous and the supernatural. I believe today that if you came here ill or sick, you will leave healed in the name of Jesus. I believe that. I believe that. Why do you believe that, Pastor? Because God is here. And if the Lord is here, something is going to happen. You can't go into the presence of God and not have something happen. You can't go into the presence of God and not have transformation in your life. Psalms chapter 121, verse 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes. Again, there's that premise of not being lowly, not being settled in the things of this world. I, the prophet said, the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes. Get your eyes off of the problem. Get your eyes off of yourself and turn your eyes to God. He said, I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? Well, let me just answer that question for a moment. Your help doesn't come from the government. <laughs> In fact, the government taketh away. Uh, the government adds some. I don't mean to be so negative about the government. The government adds some, but the government takes away more than they add, let me just say. Your job is not your support or supplier. No. Your spouse, relationships aren't going to do it for you. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Here's the answer. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. 
What a definitive statement that is. What a declaration that is. The declaration we ought to make regularly. My help comes from the Lord. Now, if my help comes from God, shouldn't my, be a, shouldn't my attention be given to the Lord? Shouldn't I focus my eyes, focus my heart, focus my passions upon the Lord? For when we see God, God moves in our life. In the midst of all this nat- national turmoil, uncertainty, dissatisfaction, delusion, disillusionment, God is calling the church to ascend to the mountain to meet with him. That's my desire. When I come together with you on a Sunday morning, I don't come together to do religious stuff. I don't come together to just bide my time. I don't do it because it's my tradition. When I meet with you, I meet with you because we're meeting with the Lord. We're meeting with God. And if we're doing it for any other reason, you got our eyes on the lowly part, you need to lift your eyes to the, to the heavens. Lift your eyes to God. And when we encounter the Lord on the mountain, when we have visited with God, when we have had a, a, an encounter with the presence of God, then we are able to lead people into the presence of the Lord. I discovered a long time ago, I cannot give away what I don't have. I can't write out a check for a million dollars today because I don't have a million dollars. I can't solve all of your problems today because I'm not the one who solves all of the problems. I can't give away what I don't have. But the one thing I have, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I have, arise in the name of Jesus. See, that's what I have. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, an authentic relationship with the Lord. So that as I arise... And I'm talking about arising. I'm talking about looking up to the mountain, ascending to the mountain, even when I'm going through the most difficult time of my life, making that decision that I will climb the mountain. How many of you have ever climbed a mountain? I I have. I have. We were growing up in California. Right behind our house was a mountain. It it wasn't wasn't a giant mountain, but it was a mountain. And as kids, we would climb up and down that mountain during the summer all the time and on Saturdays. Get to the peak of that mountain and, and, and look over the, over the community, the neighborhood that we were in. We had adventures on top of that mountain. And, and can I tell you, when you get to the top of the mountain, you have a different view. When you get to the top of the mountain, you see things differently. When I'm in the neighborhood, all I see is this house and that house and the road I, I see the potholes, I, I see the trees, I, but when I get to the mountain, I see something different. I get, a, I get a different view, a different perspective of life when we arise to the mountain. And when I speak of the rising or ascending to the mountain of God, I'm speaking metaphorically. The mountain of God represents the presence of God. Never be satisfied with the hand of God. Never be satisfied with hanging around the people of God, but desire, covet presence of the Lord in your life. To know God and to know Him intimately. To to know Him in His fullness, or at least to, to be able to encounter the fullness of the Lord. The mount of God represents the presence of the Lord. And my brother and sister, that's what I'm hungry for. I'm hungry to be in the presence of my God. Because in his presence, the Bible says, is fullness of joy. At his right hand, pleasures forevermore. The church, church, we need to be sure that we are faithful to our mandate. That we're not leading people to church. We're not leading people to religion. We're not leading people to organizations or movements. We're not leading people to personalities. We are called to lead people to Jesus. Say it again. We are called to lead people to Jesus. We find in the Bible that this happened over and over again. When when you encounter something good, you don't want to keep it to yourself. You want to share it with other people. When when you encounter a good deal, when you you find that you can buy a a car for, for pennies on the dollar, and I'm not talking about a piece of junk, I'm talking about a good car, and they've got a whole, a whole lot full of these cars. You don't keep it to yourself. You want to tell somebody. You'll call somebody up and say, I just got the best deal on a car I've ever had in my life. When there's a sale going on, people don't keep that sale a secret. People broadcast that sale. 
Well, I'm here to tell you, when we have encountered Jesus, when we've encountered the true and the living God, we don't want to keep that news to ourselves, but we want to broadcast it to the world. John chapter 1, verse 40 and 42 tells us a story about that very encounter. In John chapter 1, verse 40, it begins, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard, about, heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. Verse 41 says, The first thing that Andrew did was to find his brother Simon Peter and tell him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought Peter, or Simon, to Jesus. You see, when you find something that is eternal, you find something that is lasting, you find something that is sustaining, you don't want to keep it to yourself. You want to share it with somebody else. So what did, si what did Andrew do? He went and found his brother. He wanted his brother to encounter the same thing he had encountered. He wanted his brother to experience the same thing that he had experienced. And you, you know the story. Simon became Peter. Peter became one of the apostles. And Peter was one of the most normal and natural apostles there was of the twelve that followed Jesus. He was the one that would, would a, a, announce a, a God-revealed truth in one moment and would be contradicting Jesus the next moment, not unlike most of us, who will encounter that radical transformation one moment and struggling the next moment. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus, and the rest is history. Churches, religion, organizations, movements, and personalities will never transform somebody. We'll never change somebody. But Jesus can, and I might add, Jesus will change those who come to him. Isaiah 52, 7 says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. In other words, the prophet was saying, Blessed are the feet of those who ascend to the mountain, but don't just stay on the mountain. Jesus had that encounter at the Mount of Transfiguration where, where heaven came down and blessed Peter, James, and John and blessed Jesus. And the glory of the Lord was pronounced in that moment. Peter decided, we'll just live here. We'll just live on the mountain. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. We've got to go down from the mountain. Why? Why, if we ascend to the mountain, why would we be called down from the mountain? Because that's where hurting people are. And Jesus encountered a man whose, whose his disciples could do nothing, but Jesus came down and brought deliverance to that family. And when we ascend to the mountain, we're encouraged, we're blessed, we're empowered, a resonation of God's glory is in our life, and then we begin to share that with the people who are most in need. But to share anything with anybody, we must first ascend to the mountain. And when we ascend to the mountain, God will reveal the path of life. There's so many people today trying to figure life out. In fact, when I was growing up in the 70s, that was it. What is life all about? Why am I here? Why am I? That was the resonating sound of a generation. Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? Well, if you, if you listen, when you ascend to the mountain, when you are in contact in the presence of the Lord, he's going to reveal that to you. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3 says, Come, let us climb God's mountain. Go to the house of God, the God of Jacob, and listen to this. He will show us the way he works so that we can live the way we were made. When you ascend to the mountain, God's going to reveal life to you. God's going to reveal what life is all about. It's not about living. It's not about surviving. It's not about just getting by. It's about living life to its fullest. Complete life. Enjoying life every day. Yes, encountering difficulties, but knowing that God gives us strength to overcome, the victory to overcome every difficulty that we will ever face in our life. He will tell us, He will show us how we can live the way we were made to live. Praise the Lord. I, 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 want, to experience, <laughs> I want to experience that. I don't want to just get by in life. I don't want to just eat, eke out a, an existence. I want to live life to its fullest. And we can do that when we have that encounter with Jesus. Humanity has been living below our calling for long, too long. When you ascend to the mountain, not only will he show you the way to live, you will draw close to God. 
And in that drawing close to the Lord, that's where transformation comes. That's where we're not like we were before. As the Bible says, the old becomes, the, the, the old is gone, the new has come. Exodus chapter 19, verse 3 says, And Moses went up to God. The Lord called him to, called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel. You know the story. All the time that Moses was leading the children of Israel, he continued to ascend to the mountain. And when he got to the top of the mountain, he met with God. And not only did Moses meet with God, Moses heard God's voice. Can I tell you, when you ascend to the mountain, you're going to hear the voice of God. God's going to speak to you. God desires to reveal himself. And when you get to that mountain, you get close to God. How close to God did Moses get on that mountain? The Bible tells us that when he came off the mountain, in the presence, in the glory of God, the Bible says his face radiated the glory of the Lord. So much so that the people were afraid of Moses. So much so that they put a bag over his head. Oh God, may I be so close to you that people can see your presence in my life. That as we ascend to the mountain, to the presence of God, so encounter we have, so much of an encounter we have, that we are eternally changed. And not only are we aware of it, but people around us can see as well. I pray they don't put a bag over your head, by the way. But that we, we reveal the glory and the majesty of God. As you ascend to the mountain, you'll experience God's power. My brother and sister, I have been led to pray more and more recently that God will reveal his power in his church. We need the power of God. Not the power of God in this building, but the power of God in this temple, in our life. So that wherever we go, the power of God is there to be manifest in the heart of those who are in need. God's power. We, we go, it's like, it's like going to the, ascending to the mountain and there you, you, you plug into the power of God and you're charged with that supernatural anointing and power of God. And then you, as you descend from that mountain, you have the power for others to plug into what you have, what you've experienced, and they are charged in their life as well. Psalms 125 verse 1 and 2 says, those who trust in God are like Zion. Nothing can move it. A rock solid mountain you can always depend on. Mountains encircle Jerusalem, and God encircles his people, always has and always will. God's power reigns in our life. You are not weak. You are not anemic. You are not powerless. God has given you the Holy Spirit, and God has given you his word, and as we ascend to the mountain, he has charged us with supernatural power. So that we don't need to come to church to get that power. We ascend to the presence of God. And He gives us His power. God encircles His people. Always has and always will. And as we ascend to the mountain, you will experience a new dimension of worship as well. You cannot come into the presence of God without a mandate in the Spirit, in your heart, to worship God. Because you are in His presence. John 4, 21, Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, woman, believe me, a time is coming when we will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. But what? You will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hosea chapter 4, verse 13, they gave gifts and worship on the tops of the mountains. So when we go, when we ascend to the mountain, when we're in God's presence, we have a new dimension of worship. We don't worship God by just singing songs. We worship God by explosion of our spirit. If it's a singing of a song, if it's a raising of the hand, if it's the praise of the Lord, we do it because we've been touched by God. A new dimension of worship that transcends anything that we've encountered to this day. And as you ascend to the mountain and there you meet with God, you will experience stability. Well, if there's one thing we need in this world today, if there's one thing believers need in this world today, it's stability. Psalms 125 verse 1 and 2 says, those who trust in God are like Mount Zion. Nothing can move them. A rock solid mountain that you can always depend upon. And Psalms 125 verse 1 says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It is that reality that we will not be moved. 
Problems will come, won't move us. Challenges will come, won't move us. The most difficult of problems that we may face in our life may come into our life. It will not move us. Why? Because we are on a solid rock. Because we have been set at liberty with the Lord. And in the week to come, I want to encourage you. I want you, I'll give you homework today. I want you to read Genesis chapter 22. Because when you ascend to the mountain, something's going to happen. And when we ascend to the mountain, we will experience the promise of Mount Moriah. It's a story of Abraham and his son Isaac. It's a story about a commandment that God gave that just absolutely transcends understanding. That God would ask Abraham to sacrifice his son. Well, if you know God, God is not about death. God is all about life. And the Bible says life more abundant. So when God asked Abraham to do something that seems so contradictory to his nature, God's nature, Abraham had to ascend to the mountain. Abraham and Isaac had to ascend to the mountain. And the Bible declares that as Isaac was carrying the wood for the sacrifice, Abraham was carrying the fire. Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Dad, I see the wood for the sacrifice. Dad, I see the fire for the sacrifice. What I don't see, Dad, is where is the sacrifice? Where is the provision? Where is what we need? Where is what we require? And Abraham turned to his son, and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he spoke the promise of God not only to his son, not only for that season, but for our season as well. When Abraham said, God himself will provide the sacrifice. And next Sunday as we talk about ascending to the, to the promise of Mount Moriah, what we will discover is whatever your need may be, whatever you will encounter, whatever you cannot see with your eyes, God himself will provide. God himself will provide. And I pray and I believe that as we study this, I encourage you, read through that chapter Read through Genesis chapter 22, study it, and as we come together next Sunday, we're going to see how powerful God is in relationship to what he will provide for his children. Whatever you need, whatever you require, whatever is necessary in your life today, whatever you cannot see with your eyes or comprehend with your mind, I declare to you today, God himself will provide. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And our challenge this morning is this. There are great things at the peak of every mountain, every spiritual mountain. When God allows you to go through or to the mountain, he wants you to experience his greatness when you reach the summit. Ascending the mountain of faith may be difficult at times, and sometimes it is. I cannot promise you a, a rose garden. I cannot promise you an easy time all the time. But what I can promise you is this, God will always be with you. And God will always provide a way. Ascending the mountain may be difficult, but the view from the mountain is absolutely heavenly. Every mountaintop is within your reach. My word to you this morning is keep ascending. Keep moving forward. And if you're here this morning and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the greatest thing, the greatest gift that I could offer to you, the greatest gift that humanity could give, the greatest gift that heaven has given is the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness of sin, where humanity has always tried to overcome all of their faults and try to do it themselves. It's impossible. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it on your own. That's why Jesus came into this world. That's why he gave his life. So that through his blood, faith, the Bible calls it faith, we call it trust. When you trust God, when you simply trust what God has said, if you're in pain this morning, if you're suffering, if you've forgotten or been forgotten, your life is not over. Your life has not yet been defined. Turn to God and he will give you a life that is truly worth living every single day. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to those whose hearts are breaking, and he rescues those who are humbly sorry for their sins. Today, you can stop running from your past. You can stop running from your failures. 
You can stop running from those things that haunt or torment you in life. You can stop running from all of those things if today you'll just run to Jesus. And he will accept you just the way that you are. God always accepts us. You can't change a thing in your life. You, you, can't, you can't do enough to earn salvation, but if you'll come to him today, the Bible says he's faithful and just and will forgive you of every sin you've ever committed. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, I ask a simple question this morning, and it is the pivotal, the apex of this service. It is the mountaintop today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you have a personal daily relationship with Jesus? It's not about religion. It's not about organizations. It's not about church membership. It's about a relationship with a God who loves you. The Bible says his love endures forever. And I want you to know this morning, there may be many sins of which a man may be ashamed, but there is no sin that Jesus will not forgive. And if you're here this morning and you want to be forgiven of sin, you want a new life, you want a new beginning, not a new chapter in an old book, but a brand new book. It's called the book of life. And if you want to experience that life, to know that you'll never be alone again, never be by yourself again, but that God will be with you always. And you want to enter into that relationship with Jesus. I want to invite you to do something. And I ask you to do this as an act of faith or trust, but also so that I might pray with you. If you're here this morning and you want to be forgiven of sin, if you're tired of living like it's been in the past and you want a new life, I want to invite you to just raise your hand and wave at me so that I can pray with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Others, praise the Lord. Anybody else, just wave at me because I don't want to miss anybody. And the purpose for this is that I want to pray with you. I will pray for you, but more importantly, I want to pray with you this morning. Anybody else, you want to be forgiven of sin. This is your day, your day. We're going to pray a prayer. And those of you that raise your hand, and, and online, if you desire that personal relationship with the Lord, then I would invite you to pray this prayer as well. But what's important is not just repeating words. What's important is making these words your own, taking ownership of these words, believing and confessing these words. And I want everyone in this room to pray this prayer in agreement with those who are praying to be forgiven. Heavenly Father, today, August 7th, 2022, I ask you to forgive me. I confess today I've been wrong. I have sinned. But today I come to you. I ascend to your mountain and ask you to forgive me. Ask you to change me. Ask you to alter my life. Today, give me a new beginning. I declare, I confess, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And today, Jesus is my Savior. I am forgiven because I trust you, because I have faith in you. I am forgiven, and I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering, would you? What a wonderful experience that we have to celebrate with you a relationship with Jesus Christ. And let me say, very importantly, this is not the end, my friend. This is just the beginning of a brand new life. And we will walk with you. We will walk with you. You don't have to walk alone. We will walk with you. We have a class. It's a discipleship class, not a membership class. It's a discipleship class that helps ground you in the Word of God ground you in who you are and who God is, who Jesus is in your life. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that class. It doesn't cost you anything, absolutely free. It's our investment in your relationship with the Lord. And when this service is over, we'll have a couple of people right here to meet with you. We have a gift to give you, an honorary uh, gift to give you, and, and a brochure to give you about your relationship with the Lord. Coming here, coming forward is not membership. It's not what this is about. It's about our wanting and desiring to invest with you in your walk with God. Can I hear an amen? It's time to